Hi, this is Matt Chambers with Concept3D. I often get asked, what are the differences between the Windows version of SketchUp and the Mac version of SketchUp? I actually use both on a daily basis and I'm kind of a stickler for details. I'd like to share with you what I found to be the big and small differences between the two. Before I get started, I'd like to remind you that if you're watching this on YouTube or on the Concept3D blog, to the lower right hand corner just below this video, you should see a watch in HD link. Back to our two SketchUps. Let's talk about the tools. In the Windows version, if you click on View, hover over Toolbars, you'll see a list of all the possible tool sets. You can activate and deactivate those simply by clicking, and you can customize this workspace by dragging. On the Mac version, if you click on View, you don't see that same set. You'll see the large tool set, the Google set, as well as any extensions you have installed. But you can easily customize your workspace by right-clicking on this bar here and select Customize Toolbar. You'll be presented with various icons that you can simply drag and drop to add or remove the different sets. If you want to activate or deactivate various extensions, that's something found under Preferences. This is a little tricky. On the Windows version, you click on Window, go to Preferences, and there's our extensions. On the Mac version, it's not under Window, it's actually under SketchUp, Preferences, and here's our extensions. Speaking of extensions, online there's a wealth of options for expanding your Google SketchUp toolset. The Google SketchUp website has a handful of plugins and Ruby scripts to download. The Ruby Library Depot is always an excellent source, as is smuster.com. You may have heard that there are more plugins available for the PC version, which is probably true due to its market share, but it's not a whole lot more. You can see that most of these are available for both the PC and the Mac, as well as the ones at the Google and Smuster website. Any plugins that you download from those websites will most likely need to go to your respective plugins folder. On a Windows machine, here's the path. C drive, program files, Google, Google SketchUp 7, and finally plugins. On the Mac, the path would be from the top level of your computer, Macintosh hard drive, library, application support, Google SketchUp 7, SketchUp, and finally plugins. On a Mac, you can have multiple SketchUp models open by simply going to File and New, or File and Open and selecting a different model. On Windows, going to File and selecting New or Open, you'll be prompted if you want to save the changes in the current open model. But you can effectively have multiple models open by simply starting new instances of SketchUp. I like having multiple copies of SketchUp open because it's nice to be able to paste in place between the different model spaces as needed. I should point out too that on a Mac, clicking the red button will close a window, but it doesn't necessarily quit the running instance of that program. Whereas Windows, it's different. The button's on the other side but clicking it will actually close that instance. Now we're going to get into a few detail things. On a Mac, if you create scenes, and I'm doing that with some shortcuts right now, and then select View, Animation, Play, SketchUp will transition between your scenes based off of your transition settings. Let's do the same thing on the Windows side. But right away, you'll notice a difference. On the Windows side, you'll have an animation window allowing you to pause and stop the animation. How do you do that in the Mac? Well, you got two options. You can either click on a Scene tab to go to that tab 
and stop the animation, or you can go back to view animation and select play again. It's a little weird, but it works. In terms of export options, the Mac and the PC are mostly similar, but there's one feature that I like on the Mac that you can't do on the PC. And to show you this, I'm going to turn off my sky background. And while I'm here, I'll turn on the ground background. Notice the transparency setting on that. If I go to File, Export, 2D Graphic, for the PNG file type on the Mac, you have an option to export with a transparent background. This is particularly useful when editing exported images. And you don't want to have to pick out background information. If I create a new layer in Photoshop, with my gradient tool, I can very quickly dump a gradient on there or any background without having to go in and delete small detail. This works really good for vegetation. Exporting animations can actually get kind of tricky. I won't go too much into detail with it, but I will show you one thing that you can do on the PC that you can't do on the Mac. And this is uh, if you're exporting to an AVI or an image sequence you have the ability to set a custom frame rate. So for certain creative things that can be useful, on the Mac you have to select from a drop-down list. This next thing is probably my favorite Mac only thing. And it has to do with layers. I'll open my layers dialog. And I'll also bring up my get info dialog on some geometries. If I want to create a new layer, all I need to do is type it right in here. Notice how it automatically shows up in my layer dialog. On the Windows version of SketchUp, if I tried the same thing, nothing happens. I'd have to create the layer first and then select it from the drop-down list. For the sake of equal time, this is probably my favorite Windows SketchUp only feature. If you right-click to bring up a context menu, all you have to do to activate any one of these selections is just hit the key of the letter that starts the name. So for example, R will reverse face. It's very easy. Right-click, R. Right-click, R. On the Mac version, Right-clicking will bring up a context menu, and hitting the letter will only select that particular function, and you still have to hit return to activate it. And in the terms of workflow, all those extra returns can really add up. Related to this topic of right-clicking, if you have a Mac mouse that looks like this, with a little ball, you have a mouse that's capable of a left and a right-click. If your mouse looks like this and you don't have that little ball, it's just a one-click mouse. And if your mouse looks like this, you definitely don't have a two-button mouse. But if this is what you've got, you'll want to make sure it's set up to function as a two-button mouse. In your system preferences, click on keyboard and mouse and make sure the right click is set to secondary button. If that's set, you're good to go. Also remember that any two-button mouse with a scroll wheel will work on any Mac made in the last 10 years. The last thing I'd like to show you is the Materials Browser. Now most of these dialogs under the Window Menu option will look similar on both the Mac and the PC versions of SketchUp. The Materials Browser is an exception. Here's what it looks like on Windows. On the Mac version, it looks like this. On the Windows version, the drop-down list will take you to the built-in textures and colors. You can always return to the colors in model by clicking on the little house icon. In the Mac version, you'll only see that list and that icon if the brick is selected. On Windows, it's easy to change the name of any of your in-model colors or textures 
by selecting that texture and typing in the field at the top of the dialog. It's also easy to edit that color or texture by clicking on the Edit tab. Once your edit is complete, simply click on the Select tab. In the Mac, you're not going to see a field or any tabs, so what you'll want to do is right-click on the texture and select Edit. Here's where you can change the name, as well as edit the opacity or color. When you're finished, simply click Close. That's about all I have time for right now in this video. As always, I encourage you to check out our website at concept3d.com. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Please send them to info at concept3d.com. Thanks.